Good morning, everyone. Uh, I call to order public meeting number 259. One um, quick uh, agenda item that we will not be dealing with. We will not be having an executive session at the end of this today. And I want to turn to our, um, our uh, executive director to give us more about that. Thank you. Sure. So there we go. Um, I will, and I'm just going to pass this along to General Counsel Blue. We did put that on as a placeholder just in case, but General Counsel Blue can sort of tell us where we are in that process. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I had asked that an executive session be placed on the agenda in case there was a need to discuss litigation strategy with the Commission in executive session. I do not have any litigation strategy updates for the Commission, so as Commissioner Cameron noted, there will not be an executive session today. Regarding the Nevada litigation, I can advise the Commission that, as requested by the judge in the case, the parties are continuing to work on an order for submission to the judge for her review, consistent with the judge's direction. We are still within the time allotted to provide that order to the judge. Finally, as we know, we'll have a new chair joining us shortly. I anticipate that we may need an executive session to further brief her in the Commission on Litigation Strategy. Any executive session after her arrival will be noticed as appropriate with the open meeting law. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. That makes sense. And we've all, uh, most of us have had a chance to meet the new chair. She um, will make a tremendous addition to our team and looks forward to uh, delving into these issues. And I would totally agree with you that um, um, an executive session with her in presence is certainly uh, a better way to go, more valuable to everybody. So um, I believe by our next meeting she will be here. So, okay, moving on to this meeting. Uh, approval of the minutes. Commissioner Stebbins. Sure, Madam Chair. I move the uh, commission approve the minutes from the January 10th, 2019 meeting, um, subject to correction for any typographical errors or other non-material matters. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five, four, zero. Okay, moving on to our administrative update. Back to you, Executive Director Bedrosian. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, uh, I, before my update, I anticipate this actually will be a relatively concise meeting. I won't say brief, but concise. Um, the agenda, as you can see, has a, reg a regulation, um, some votes for racing, and then um, our mid-year budget review, which we started uh, last uh, meeting. Uh, in terms of general update, I think uh, both um, General Counsel Blue and Interim Chair Cameron have uh, pointed out the um, appointment of a new chair. Um, and indeed, she's uh, already come over and start to engage in that transition process. We are uh, continuing to work with her in that transition process. She's leaving one important job to another important job. So we're going to facilitate that, um, which actually leads me to the second agenda item, which is Regency discussion. And um, uh, we had uh, previously talked about uh, bringing this back up in front of the commission in January, which we are, but uh, the interim factor uh, change in circumstances is the appointment of a new chair. Um, and it seems appropriate that um, we wait until the new chair is in place so th the new commission as in total can address this. I would also note um, that we've recently got a additional public comment from the Aquina uh, tribe, which we will update um, our public packet. I don't think the public packet today has it in, but we do have um, public comments. And we will update those public comments and post those. Um, and once the new chair is in place um, and comfortable with everything else that uh, she has to do, um, as a, this will be an appropriate agenda item, we will uh, obviously repost this um, with the with the appropriate notice. But there's nothing substantive I would suggest we need to do today. Yeah, I, I totally agree that um, uh, any decision we make should include our new uh, chairwoman and um, giving her a little time to understand the issues and read all the comments is, is certainly appropriate. And this last comment is, is, is has some interesting information, so I look forward to incorporating that in the, in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, 
whether it's the meeting that she's here or another one, uh, I, I look forward to perhaps having a discussion on some of the comments that we have received. Um, there is at least a couple that I think need merit some clarification as to what they might be um, commenting on, Rel some at least from a legal standpoint as to whether we have the authority or not uh, to issue another license. I think it's um, having that discussion um, again with the, with the new chair might be a really good um, starting point for, uh, for these considerations. Sure. So we will keep that on, obviously, our agenda um, and figure out when the new chair arrives, when the appropriate time is, among all the other issues, right. um, to, um, to re-raise that. Right. Thank you. Great. I am, uh, that's all I have, Madam. Great. Okay. Moving on to um, item four, our legal division, General Counsel Blue. Commissioners, you have in your packet today the final draft version of 205 CMR 146. This is the gaming equipment regulation. You have already approved this by emergency. This changed some of the language of certain of the tables where you could have seven chairs. Instead of saying you had to have seven, you could have up to seven to give some flexibility to our licensees. We did have a public hearing on that regulation this morning. There were no comments. So we have um, taken it through the process. We just need your approval to finalize the promulgation process today. And the red line version is the one included in the packet, right? These are all the changes That's uh, right. that we have proposed. Yes. And it is the same as what you approved by emergency last time as well. Oh, that's right. Madam Chair, I move that the Commission approve the amended Small Business Impact Statement for 205 CMR 146 gaming equipment that was included in the packet. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not in favor? Okay, 4-0. Moving on to the impact statement. Sure. I further move that the Commission approve the version of 205 CMR 146 gaming equipment as included in the packet and authorize the staff to take all steps necessary to finalize the regulation promulgation process. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Not in favor? Okay. Good. I, I assume we didn't have any further discussion there? That's right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, we're moving right along to the racing division. Dr. Lightbaum. So, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning we have in front of us the recovery of the 2017 unclaimed tickets um, for the different tracks. Um, if you remember uh, at our last meeting, we asked for approval for uh, the tickets to individual patrons to be paid, and they were approved. So um, the only track that had um, individual payments to uh, patrons was Suffolk. So on the uh, first one for Suffolk Downs, um, their total was uh, 236,302 uh, um, and you subtract that amount of the uh, unclaimed tickets to patrons, the 217.63. So the total um, that we're asking from Suffolk Downs is 236,084.68. And um, these do require a vote from the commission and uh, Chad Bork, our senior financial analyst and um, Doug O'Donnell, who was our previous one and, and works in the finance department, have both reviewed these figures as well. And find them to be accurate. Okay. Yes. Very good. Thanks. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the commission approve the payment of 236.084 and 68 cents from Sterling Suffolk Racecourse to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for 2017 unclaimed winnings. Or outs. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. Very good. Thank you. So the next one is Wonderland, and their uh, total came to 7,981.23. Uh, and again, this requires a vote. Do we have a motion? And just um, there was no offset. Um, in this case? Correct. Suffolk Downs was the only track that had a, an offset. Okay. 
Uh, Madam Chair, I move that uh, the Commission approve the payment of $7,981.23 from Wonderland Greyhound Park to the Commonwealth for the 2017 unclaimed winnings or outs. Second. Further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Four zero. Very good. So the next track we have is Plain Ridge, and um, the amount for them came to 186,705.64. And again, a vote for this is required. Madam Chair, I move the Commission approve the payment of $186,705.64 from the Plain Ridge Race Course to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for the 2017 unclaimed winnings or outs. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Not in favor? Again, approved 4-0. Okay, and next for Raynham, it was 150,144.7. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the commission approve the payment of $150,144.70 from Raynham Taunton Massasoit Greyhound Associations to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for 2017 unclaimed winnings or outs. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. So the um, tracks will get letters from uh, Mr. Bork stating those amounts. Obviously, they're already aware of it because they've gone over it jointly. Um, but he'll send an official letter out requesting that, and the tracks have to um, turn that money in before April 1st. Um, once that's in, then um, we cash the checks, and then um, those amounts for the two horse tracks, that money um, goes back out to the purse accounts for each individual track. And for the Greyhound tracks, that goes into that uh, Greyhound Stabilization Fund. Oh, that's right. So you'll see us back on this same issue um, middle of April. And what has happened to that fund, do you know? Um, um, the money still goes into that fund, but there's no mechanism right now for the money to, pay to come out. pay out of it, right? So it just keeps going. It's, it's accumulating little by little. Um, and remind me, the outs are uh, for unclaimed winnings uh, from both simulcasting and live racing, or only yes. simulcasting? <clears throat> yes, both. Okay. So if we look forward to our comprehensive bill, those issues yes. would be able to be addressed. Absolutely. Correct. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving ahead to um, the Finance Division, our CFAO, Lennon. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman and Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm joined by Agnes Bollier, our Budget and Procurement Manager, and we're here two weeks after the initial mid-year budget update for the Gaming Control Fund. Uh, before I start, I want to point out a mistake in the memorandum and the chart on page two. I deleted the wrong line. Uh, the line that says HH Game Sense 144,418 should have been deleted and replaced with JJ Public Safety Everett 807,000. Um, the total of 1.17 million is correct and corresponds with the um, overview summary chart on page one. It's just we deleted the game sense and I haste trying to get the memo done. Um, took out the wrong line on the chart. Thank you for correcting. You're welcome. Um, now that that's covered, as a reminder, the Massachusetts Gaming Commission approved a FY19 budget for the Gaming Control Fund of $33.4 million, composed of 22.6 in regulatory costs and 10.79 in statutorily required costs. Gaming Control Fund required an initial assessment of $28.32 million on licensees. FY18 revenue exceeded FY18 expenses by $947,000, which resulted in the initial FY19 assessment being reduced. In this revised correspondence, staff is recommending that $3.1 million in additional costs be added to the FY19 approved budget. This is revised down from the $3.25 million that we presented um, last uh, two weeks ago, and that's due to the fact that we're not including the additional cost for GameSense. This would be revised. This would result in a revised budget of $36.5 million for the Game and Control Fund. The increased costs are partially offset by $860.9,000 in revenue that has exceeded the initial FY19 projections. 
The combined effect of budget increases and additional revenue would result in an increase to licensees' assessments of 2.24 million. Once again, revised down from the 2.39 uh, due to the uh, drop off of the game sense cost. As a reminder, and you'll see it throughout the entire memorandum, our licensees bear the full cost of our budget as we are 100% assessed on the industry. We put our mid year budget out for public comment. It stayed out for two weeks, and we did not receive any formal comment. However, we did have a meeting with licensees on January 17th to discuss the proposal, and we, we received some valuable feedback. Uh, the licensees understand that we're ramping up and need to prepare to open another Category 1 facility, but want us to not become one of the most expensive regulators in the industry. Um, that's something they've said to us from 14 forward. Um, we do understand and acknowledge their concerns. We share their sentiment. We cannot become one of the most expensive. So we've, we've committed to revising the number of gaming agents in this uh, memorandum. We've dropped off the game sense costs. And we've also committed to having ongoing discussions as well as doing look backs with our licensees for regulatory and public safety efficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, another piece of the discussion that was brought up was the assessment allocation. Uh, once again, in our proposal, we've proposed a very simple method of basing the initial assessment on gaming positions in June and then revisiting that al allocation based on gaming positions at the mid year and revising the assessment from the mid year point going forward. Um, one other piece we did discuss. Um, so this, this assessment piece, I think we have for this initial time period a consensus. Um, some people re reserve their right to go back to beginning and come forward to the commission to request an overall change. Um, but for getting this piece done, they're good with what we have in the memo. Um, one other piece we did discuss is doing similar to what we did last year putting our budget a couple hundred thousand over what our anticipated revenues were. Um, licensees deferred to us on that, but based on the fact that we have a lot of questions on some other cost pressures we may face throughout the year, um, we decided not to do that. So it would be the 2.24 million increase assessment rather than offsetting by maybe six or seven hundred thousand to bring that assessment down. So I, let me just add, uh, because I could not make the um, the call that Derek had with our licensees. So I had separate conversations with our licensees with um, what I would suggest are similar themes to obviously what Derek talked about. And um, we did have discussions about this unique time frame in the commission sort of ramp up of two category one openings potentially back to back, which um, inherently involves an increase in property staff obviously. Um, but it also gives us a time, um, particularly with our, our now experience at uh, a facility like Plainridge Park Casino, to be able to go back in time and um, try and do a risk assessment of are, are we comfortable, the commission comfortable with how we are regulating the facilities and what our risk tolerance is in terms of the number of personnel, what they're looking at. Um, and, and, um, and items correlate to that. So they, you know, I, I absolutely committed to doing that at the appropriate time, um, and they were thankful of that. Um, so, um, uh, so consistent with what uh, Derek said, that was the feedback I got. I also, um, I think I had told you before, uh, MGM was concerned about potentially whether assessments could be retroactive or not. I don't think we need to address that today. That's not, a, that's not an issue. Um, I think there needs to be a little more conversation. Um, and, and at some point, it may be that we need to officially address that. I don't think we need to, uh, we don't need to address it today. Um, but uh, I uh, and uh, Derek, I know we've talked to uh, Commissioner Zuniga in his capacity as our treasurer, um, are uh, very um, aware of cost creep allocations and the, the sort of ceiling becoming the new floor type thing. So it, it, it will be appropriate to get a new chair. I think we have a lot of opportunity um, potentially resolve Encore in, in one way or the other, figure out where that is, um, that we would know what our horizon, our new horizon looks like. And I, I think I've referred to it as steady state. 
Um, and then when we get to that point, it's fair for us to do a, a reassessment of our regulatory costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I can mention a little bit or, or just um, expand a little bit on that look back. Um, I, um, there's a couple of uh, line items here in the summary that, I, um, that we could probably characterize as one-time costs. The IT for Everett, the IT migration, and the public safety for MGM, uh, which is really fine-tuning some of the overtime needs and, 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 and whatnot. Um, there's other that, of course, are um, expanding capacity and have, will have a tendency to to become a fixed cost, given that you know we're planning for for more activity. And um, I think the the loop back is critical in terms of how uh, we're really entering a new phase of of the commission after um, whatever happens with with Region A. More of that steady state that you mentioned one in which I really see and, that, and hope that we look for across properties efficiencies, for example. And as roles, uh, certain oversight roles change, uh, look at how people you know, um, are uh, redefining their roles, for example. And that doesn't necessarily just mean at the properties, but also um, here in central office. Uh, there's something that we've um, We've talked about in the past as, as a little bit of a pending, uh, and that's the notion of the, the steady state audit function that we will have. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that I'm interested in and looking at is the reality that we de facto con conduct a lot of oversight already on site. And when we think of the audit function, we take all of that into consideration to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts, for example or we're not auditing the work that we already audited. Um, so that's, uh, that's I think. And uh, the, you're re probably referring to the work we either audit manually or digitally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's, um, uh, there's, there's great uh, uh, value in, in, you know, in having a robust uh, oversight upon opening. Uh, but for the reasons I'm, I'm, we're all understanding, uh, looking at for efficiencies across uh, properties, for example, or uh, the reality of a steady state would allow us to, you know, to really be in a good position to look at that uh, look back, if you will, and, and 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 look at all those all those costs. I imagine, for example, that a, during um, a steady state, we might be able to really trend certain categories of costs, for example, and I put IT in that in that bucket where. Um, you know, saying, you know, whatever the percentage of the total budget we would be comfortable with, um, it might give us a good uh, way to plan for more than one year at a time. That there's, there's a schedule of replacing equipment and, and, and so on and so forth, which is often um, one of the, from, from a year to the next, without real planning, can become a really big ticket item. Um, and you know our our overall budget, I think, uh, uh, and I envision, will also have um, a good opportunity to do trend analysis and comparisons to um, to other regulatory frameworks that uh, that we have done before, um, in a way that's a lot more insightful. Um, so I, I mentioned the one-time costs. I also wanted to mention something I mentioned before, which is uh, some of these. Um, is given the nature of the uncertainty in some of these costs, and legal is the, 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 the obvious example, um, we might be back um, before the end of this fiscal year for another review uh, like this. Um, but um, as, as usual, uh, this is um, the staff's best guess as to what, uh, what we need at the time and why we have um, the numbers that we have. Along those same lines, um one of the things that I've been involved with, uh, you know, both on the racing side and on the uh, investigation side, I know that uh, our IEB did a, a very thorough job in researching other agencies in order to, to kind of predict their initial staffing numbers. We've all been kind of involved with that, with the executive director. And um, one of the things they know that I'm looking for and that they understand the need for it. Detective Lieutenant Connors, uh, Director Wells, is a data-driven analysis. So that we really have an understanding of what 
uh, our staffing numbers should be, not this is what everybody else has, this is the way we've always done it, which is a issue in policing in general, uh, but, mm -hmm. but looking at it uh, from, from really analyzing that data, collecting the right information, analyzing it, and helping us determine appropriate staffing numbers. So uh, along with your theme of look backs and, um, and really analyzing what we have to determine wh where our risks are. So they understand that well, we will be doing that when we're in a steady state. As it turns out that Springfield, you know, already looking at those numbers, they, they are very, very busy there. Um, we've made some adjustments at Plain Ridge already. Racing, we've done that work already. I was always uh, happy to see that the state police in the off season from racing work on investigations for the casinos, which is an appropriate use of resources. And, um, you know, we outsourced that lab right away, which was another way to, um, uh, to determine resources that we need for racing. So I, I agree with you, Commissioner, and um, I think everyone knows the executive director is very much uh, cognizant and involved with this, that, that these are things we have to do to make sure our costs are in line. I think we're looking for a vote to approve um, the additional monies to the budget, as well as uh, the look, the revision to the assessment allocation for the second half of the year. So, uh, Madam Chair, I will be happy to move that the commission approve um, the additional assessment on licensees of two point uh, two million two hundred and forty-eight thousand seven hundred and ninety-seven dollars, as discussed and presented here in the packet. Um, uh, period. Second. Further discussion on the budget? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not in favor. Four zero. Thank you for your work on this. Thank you for your time. Both of you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Moving ahead to Commissioner updates. Do we have an update from anyone? Um, you know, that, uh, that previous discussion uh, just made me think of some of the recent uh, legislative action that has been uh, reported, of course, uh, with, uh, with the submission of the budget at the state level. And um, uh, I think uh, sports uh, betting or the prospect of sports betting gets all the attention, but uh, something we've, just, we've discussed in the past is also uh, the raising um, bill that we have submitted for um, for uh, consideration and has been postponed or you know extended uh, one year one year at a time. Uh, I hope that um, if there is uh, action in this realm uh, in whatever way, shape, shape or form, um, that um, and I know that we will be there to inform the the process as we have uh, tried and attempted and done in in, in the past. Uh, my my quick review relative to uh, uh, costs, for example. Um, is that uh, depending on how uh, some of these um, uh, expansion, if any, occurs, that there's always um, the consideration for regulatory costs on the one hand, um, and, um, and, uh, and of course, uh, any expansion also like what the Gaming Act did, that there be consideration towards um, responsible gaming, um, much in the way that, uh, that the Gaming Act does. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do look forward to having more discussions along the way, depending on what, um, what the legislative process uh, brings. Um, I think um, uh, there may be a lot of moving pieces, but I think we're in a, we're in a good position to inform it. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So I just uh, had an update as well along those same lines. Um, you mentioned sports betting. I know that uh, I was involved uh, in a conference call with the planners for um, a group from Europe, ICE, it's their biggest um, uh, gaming uh, conference every year in London, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, they are coming to Boston in early May, uh, and they will be uh, focusing on sports betting and, uh, and other topics, but uh, we are involved. It was nice that they thought to involve the, the local um, regulators here. And so we will be involved. A couple of our uh, folks will be speaking at the conference, serving on panels, but it's a good opportunity to bring this group to Boston and all the experts will be coming. Um, their agenda 
should be up soon. It's in planning stages right now, but that's early May. And um, again, we're pleased to be involved in, in helping them um, plan this conference and, and bring in some of our folks that have good expertise in these areas. So that will be happening. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner, you always meant, you mentioned racing as well. That's another area. I've had some, um, some good meetings as well as our general counsel, our, our um, ex uh, director of racing, trying to help. There are a couple of credible groups out there that are really looking um, to build a thoroughbred racetrack in the Commonwealth. And we have just been, as we do with anyone, uh, providing informational information, meaning what does the law say, what are the monies used for, what do you need to do in a community in order to move forward, um, what would the license entail, all of those kinds of meetings. So we have entertained over the last couple of months um, at least two groups who are interested in different parts of the state in, in uh, trying to move ahead with with that, one of our responsibilities is to um, is to regulate racing, and um, so we take that responsibility seriously. And uh, um, uh, some inf interesting um, plans are, are out there, and we will see if they uh, move forward. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, anything else? I just have one one other uh, very quick update. Um, I, separately, we were at, uh, at MGM observing um, uh, a lot of the gaming a uh, agents' activities. Uh, I was, um, uh, the Commissioner Stevens came in uh, a few days after I did. Uh, we'll be going to Plain Ridge uh, tomorrow to observe uh, a lot of the activities there. Really early because the drop starts quite early. But uh, look forward to 4 a.m. Yes. Well, later than that. Well, when we're, when there's still drop, but not, not necessarily at the very beginning. Uh, you will be there at 4 a.m.? At 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a large cup of coffee. <laughs> um, and, uh, but but it, this is really a, a, an effort that, I, um, that you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand relative to the, the duties. Um, the, um, and and you know, I will report back uh, when, when, when it's appropriate. Great. Yeah, I had, uh, as Commissioner Zuniga said, we didn't go at the same time, but it was interesting to kind of see, we saw a lot of the gaming agents activity kind of in the lead up to opening, or at least I had that opportunity and to kind of go back and see what kind of four month steady state begins to look like and how the, uh, you know, what the gaming agents are, are undertaking. And, you know, again, credit to, uh, Angela, the senior supervisor out in Springfield, it was a good opportunity to visit with her and hear how she is kind of uh, moving staff around and how she directs them to take care of certain issues and do some audit follow-up, um, not necessarily the numbers, but processes and procedures that are ingrained in our regulations and seeing how our licensee uh, continues to try to comply with those. So it was, uh, it was a good opportunity, looking forward to the meeting tomorrow as well. Great. I um, don't believe we have any business that we didn't anticipate. And we have already mentioned that we will not be um, holding an executive session today. So I will. Uh, the only other thing, Commissioner, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, uh, you reminded me um, we have traditionally been on a two week tempo. Yeah. Um, we may shift yes. that in February. Uh, that two-week tempo is going to take us into school vacation week. So it may be, it may be that our next public meeting will be three weeks out, which is the second week of February, and then the next one after that would be the last week of February. So it would bookend school vacation week. Right. Thank you for that, and I believe we are uh, in the works with, with setting it up that way. So, okay, great. Thank you for that. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. Do we have a motion? Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.